The U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear arguments on Tennessee's ban on medical care for transgender minors. The Biden administration is challenging the law, which bans hormone therapy and puberty blockers for children. Around half of the U.S. states have such bans on gender-affirming care for minors, as it's known. The defense trial attorney, Misty Maris, joins me now. Well, the first thing to make clear is they decided to hear it, but we won't, the hearing won't be till next year, and it's pretty much about this time next year uh, that we'll get the result. Absolutely. So the Supreme Court did decide to take up this issue, which is something that the Biden administration was asking to be expedited. The reason being, right now, everything relating to transgender care is in flux because these statutes that are being passed across the country, 25 states, uh, and Tennessee being one that's going to be kind of the poster child for this, the one the Supreme Court is going to hear, has put medical providers in a quandary right. as to what is and what is not. So hearing the case was the first step for the Supreme Court to basically alleviate some of those concerns and give some clarity moving forward. So they only chose the Tennessee case. There were several others that they could have done. That was obviously significant, but it suggests if you take that that they chose the Tennessee case, would you expect a blockbuster decision or an incremental, let's start nibbling away at this until we're really sure where we're going over time? Well, it's really important to look back at recent decisions which aren't exactly on point with respect to transgender rights under the Constitution, but did provide an expansion. So back the Bostock case in 2020 expanded Title VII, which relates to employment, to include gender identity. So you see some of the arguments being raised in these for this particular appeal. They're similar. They're saying that transgender rights, look back at the Supreme Court precedent, it's covered under the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause. And this would not be treating transgender children equally to others. And so looking back at that history, you're right, it's a narrow issue here. But whatever the decision is, is going to have pretty wide ranging implications on how that standard applies in the healthcare sphere. So, transgender the next Dobbs? Transgender, the next Roe v. Wade, the next Obergefell? Funny enough, the Republican states have been citing Dobbs in, in, their, in their briefs relating to this case because their argument is that this is something that should be left to legislatures on a state-by-state -state basis when it comes to gender-affirming care for those 17 and under. And so Dobbs is, is one of the cases that they're using as that framework because that's a very similar situation in the sense that there was a constitutional right that was right. Uh, under Roe v. Wade, which was reversed under Dobbs. So a and very similar a whole, argument. And we've got a whole load of decisions. They've even extended the day, the, the term, if you like, for, for, that they're going to do next week. Uh, so we've got extra days, more decisions than you can shake a stick at. Still to come, some big ones. <laughs> Definitely. So many big ones. Are we keeping our reading glasses on to make sure to catch up as they continue to come out? Some we thought we'd see this week, but now we're extended for another another uh, couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens. Good to have you with us. I'm grateful to you. Thank you very much.